Hello, Mary Lou, prom night two. <laughs> that rhymes. That's right, it's time to finally review The Haunting of Hamilton High. Say what? Surprise, motherfucker! Prom Night 2, Electric Mary Lou, was just a title slapped onto an unrelated film, which was to be called The Haunting of Hamilton High. Which means you don't have to listen to me bang on about continuity errors between this and the first film. I guess I see where they get off calling this a Prom Night sequel, though, as there are proms in both, so, you know, it's as related to the first film as the remake was. And this is also a revenge film like the first. Sorta, kinda, maybe. And both involved ghosts! You know, in the way that in Prom Night 1, they... didn't. Yeah, if you look at this as a sequel, there's suddenly supernatural elements, so tying this to Prom Night makes about as much sense as making the remake at all! Haha, <laughs> I'm just gonna take shots at the remake the whole time! No, moving on. Prom Lou Hello Night 2 makes the unusual choice of starting with its greatest scare first. <laughs> Sorry about that. What actually is weird about the opening is we're only at the school here to find the title inside a suitcase. Then they just throw us over to the church. Really tricked us there, Mary Lou. And speaking of, that's exactly what she's here to do because after listing off how she is trouble... These are great sins. I loved every minute of it. Well, I have a confession for you. I'm in the middle of a comedy movie, and due to wacky circumstances, I just winded up in this confessional, and I'm not a real priest, so I don't care. Damn it! I'm late for the prom for nothing! <laughs> Over at the Tutti Fruity Red Light Prom Night, Mary Lou can't help but be a jokester as she sends her boyfriend Bill off to get punched so she can make out with someone else! Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, her punchlines could use a little work, but... At least she tried! You came with me! Oh yeah, I forgot. Everything's good now. That never gets old. Yeah, that's old. Romero's coming. Hide the stink bomb. Our principal always comes into the stalls to see how our shits are going. Luckily, the quick-thinking duo hide the stink bomb in the trash. It's time to announce a prom queen for 1957 at Hamilton High. Mary Lou Moore! <laughs> Oh, come on, you knew that was coming. So Bill lights up the stink bomb? That looks suspiciously more like an explosive. But luckily it was something he had to light because Mary Lou coated her dress in gasoline. It's one of those prom traditions that never made it out of the 50s. And she didn't get her crown. Truly one of the worst parts of being set on fire. No, really, apparently it was. Somebody Throw another stink bomb at her! The liquid will put out the fire! Well, at least that'd be more of a plan than standing there looking aghast. <laughs> 
Well, I tried. No one here heard of stop, drop, and roll? I guess here it was spin, drop, and hiss. Really? Damn it! And she died! Cause the school is filled with idiots! Rather than a single fire extinguisher. Or it's just cause she wore the most flammable dress in the universe, your call! It's cause they were idiots. Now it's time for revenge! Just kidding, 30 years later we meet the main type character, Vicky Carpenter. She's... making sure she still has boobs. But that's something her mother wouldn't like, as she's super religious. Get it? It's kinda like Carrie, but it doesn't really play into much of anything except her stupid face. I smiled once. I thought I was going to die. Do it! That stuff will kill you. <laughs> Michael Ironside, deciding to take a break from playing army or police officers, is the principal. He's also Bill. Yes, he took the job of principal at the school where he accidentally killed a woman. Good memories, I guess. Was her death ever investigated? I mean, he was hardly subtle up there yelling, or did everyone just stand around looking like idiots till she burned out and just went home after? Well, she burned out. Guess prom's over. Let's go home. I'm afraid you're gonna throw away your whole future. I'm afraid you're gonna star on prom night too. I learned it from you, Dad. I learned it from watching you. Scanner House! Man, don't you just wish they'd had Michael Ironside in a wig play his younger self? That would have been amazing. There's no way she's gonna let me. Oh, wow. It was acceptable in the 80s. It was acceptable at the time. Anyway. They're afraid if my hair gets any bigger, he'll take over my entire body. So the prop room is naturally located in the dungeon of the school. You'd think maybe it'd be near the stage or something, but clearly I'm not thinking lame-brained horror contrivance. Then Vicky sees the soul suitcase that had the title inside it. This was also shown closing after Mary Lou died. I really don't understand if something is up with this case or if she was just clumsy. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! There they are, my ghosts! They'll rule the day! They oh! Must resmell you! Hey, hey guys? Little, little help? Ah oh, shit. I hope I'm not stuck in here so long, I'm hardly relevant anymore. Oh! <laughs> Why the hell do I have this picture in the first place? Wait, the prom queen crown from 1957 where the prom queen was burned alive was dumped inside a suitcase in the prop room? That wasn't taken in for anything? Oh, I forgot. The investigation was... If the crown was dumped in the soul case after, why didn't Mary Lou get out then? Ah, oh, yes, it's been months. Time for the world to get a new Mary Lou. Just give me a few minutes, okay? Oh, damn it. So everything's okay, right? I'm more hair now than woman, twisted and evil. Actually, there is a huge problem. Vicky's wedgie! Pregnant. Oh, I didn't know you could get hair pregnant. 
So Harry Hair McParachute Pants is pregnant, and the guy bailed out on her. This is actually going to be a very serious plot point through the rest of this scene. And guess how many super serial scenes she has left? Oh yeah. Hmm, no, I could never get this on my head. Unless I became a wizard! So, was that something else drug up from the bowels of Hell's prop room? Or is that just what she wore out today? Kinda hard to tell. But after coming to the sad conclusion there aren't enough spells in the world to get that crown through her head head, she decided she'll just pick off the fake ruby. But that wasn't the right direction to pick it off in, apparently, so she picks it off twice. Oh, that is it! They can kill me all they want, but they do not fuck with that crown I almost got! Like, seriously, Mary Lou, your prom was 30 years ago. Move on. Mary Lou then teases us with cutting her head off, but realizes the blade will be dull before it got through the dew, so hangs her instead. But she forgot the hair weight will break the beans, so there's only one solution. <laughs> Doesn't Mary Lou have actual people to get revenge on? Like Michael Stinkbomb's side? Nah, <laughs> first on the list is Hairdo, because she dared to fuck with a crown. If we were going with the vengeful ghost plot, it might have made sense to not have this take place 30 years later. I get the feeling this might have been a bit of Nightmare on Elm Street influence, but Freddy had a reason to wait. He wanted to get revenge by taking it out on their children since that hurt more. Mary Lou has a good reason to be angry too. These people were idiots and let her die, but it's something never touched upon. It's extra annoying when a movie perfectly sets up motivation for murders and then goes, Oh well, let's have random deaths. Can't believe I kept up this slutty girl picture for 30 years. Gotta remember the good old times of when I was almost a hero, but that might have hurt some, so I'm glad you did. Did Mary Lou do that? She hate herself? I suppose that makes sense. I mean, I hate her. What happened? It's Jess. She messed up the art room! We can take comfort that she is with the Lord, resting in a better place. Actually, she believed in reincarnation. And let the violence of her passing remind us of the dangers, the violence we see so much of in our streets, on our television sets, and in the movies. Dude, if you've got nothing, just admit it. Well, she might be dead, but her hair will never die! Ah! Ooh, the grave of some person! It really shocks me for some reason. It's not even like Vicky's heard Mary Lou's name yet. There could almost be a reason for this, but not the way the movie does it. So someone dying at the school not only doesn't cancel the prom, it doesn't even postpone it, or even cancel the next day of school? Whoever made that decision must really not care about deaths at this school. Oh yeah. Looks pretty well hung. <laughs> In the hell was that? Okay, some actual praise here. These otherworld-like spots are some of my favorite parts of this film. It doesn't hurt that it reminds me of Silent Hill, but some of the ideas going on in these parts are pretty neat. It's got some creepy things like blood coming out of the fountain, not accompanied by a jump scare. 
I love you, Mary Lou. These parts really feel like something is just messing with her head or she's going crazy and have a strange, dreadful feel to them. They do really well by just making things feel wrong and set a disturbed tone, and it really makes me wish that more of the movie was like this. More confusion comes in the way, though, of Bill Burninator's side going down into hell and easily finding Bobby Singer there on the third door to the left. Passing him, though, he gets to the prop room and rushes to close the suitcase. The only reason for him to do something like this would be if he knew something, but guess what? I know nothing! I mean, he knows nothing! His best buddy stole your girlfriend before you turned her extra crispy priest even shows up to discuss Mary Lou, and Bill wants to hear none of it, so why would he rush to close that case? It could have finally had some explanation for the suitcase within the scene if Bill knew something was wrong, but instead all the scene does is prove that Bill's son is extremely bored as he apparently watches the house the whole time the priest visits. I wonder what they're talking about. I hope it's about how pretty I am. I'll beat that stupid Goldilocks for prom queen. I'm gonna imagine it right now! In my head, I'm played by Tom Welling! I think you dropped something. Congratulations, Chloe. Clark? The crown's mine, bitch. <laughs> Genius. There's another few neat scenes showing Vicky's descent into losing herself to Mary Lou. I particularly like that the picture of her favorite person in the world changes to Mary Lou's favorite person upon looking away and back. Her rocking horse also comes to life. It's sort of freaky at first, but gets kind of silly, and I love how Vicky just seems annoyed by it. Go away. This is my room. Like, come on guys, not tonight, I got a headache. Oh, and now my blanket is trying to squash me, give me a break. No, not that kind, you know what I mean. <sighs> Oh, and come on, you seriously changed my door to a lock yourself inside door. That is the lamest, Mr. Rockin' Ed. <laughs> I must say, <laughs> the body of Christ compels you. The body of Christ compels you. The body of Christ. Compels you! The daddy of Seist compels you! <laughs> Oops, that's one for the blooper reel! <laughs> Luckily for Vicky, bored as shit Craig is a badass that rides a motorcycle. Though the driving shots are clearly a stunt double, what we did see him do, though, is kinda coast one across a parking lot in neutral, but what he absolutely is the master of is fixing it all over the place. So why can't we be friends might be a little too badass for him. I love you. Love me, we're a happy family. One of the coolest scenes of the film is when Mary Lou is completely taking over as she writes help me from the other side of the chalkboard. It's actually nice symbolism of Mary Lou coming from the other side and pulling Vicky through so that she can cross over. The chalkboard becoming water is also a nicely executed practical effect. Just forcing the perspective like this works so much better than if it had been done years later with stupid CGI. 
die. I love too the extra little bit of the equation on the board having its characters spin around the pool with her. But unfortunately, this is where we lose most of the creepy tone parts and a grasp on what was actually happening when we see Vicky, aka Mary Lou now, emerging from the suitcase. If this had been in her head as her losing the battle for control of herself with the ghost, I'd like it a lot, but Mary emerging from the suitcase would seem to indicate that it really happened. And what is Mary Lou gonna do in her wake? Kit revenge? <laughs> Don't be silly! She's gonna do what's most important to her! Screw with priests in the confessional. <gasps> We all stray from the path of the Lord sometimes, child. But with penance, you will find your way again. Will you help me, Father? Of course, child. Will you pray for me? Yes. Will you fuck me? Yes. Really? Damn it! And do you know what pissed me off the yeah. most? His half-assed attempt to put the fire out? No fucking wings! Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I suppose that'd be pretty bad, too. See, I could get behind her killing Priest Buddy if it was about him not saving her, but the dialogue doesn't back that up, and instead it kind of makes it seem aimless. And shouldn't you want to kill Stinklebomb's side? Wait, I forgot! Picking out plastic jewels from a dollar store crown puts you at the top of the list! Then it's just goofy Mary Lou living life like she's Vicky, but also like it's the 50s. I really wish Mary Mary Lou was in a confused state, so it makes sense that she was somewhere in between being Vicky and herself. And she'd still be killing because she sort of remembers being angry at everyone for their lack of action, but doesn't fully comprehend what's happened to her, hence the help me she wrote on the board. I also wish we had continued to follow Vicky in the demented world inside her head, and she had to find a way to get back in control, and maybe the opportunity for that came when Mary Lou finally confronts Bill. Because during their confrontation, Bill makes her realize that 30 years have passed and she's dead, which weakens her enough for Vicky to pull Mary back through the other world. Or the chalkboard pool or something like that. You know what I mean. But I suppose the next best thing is a teacher grabbing her butt so she can burn his dick off. <laughs> Yes, By the way, Toasty Crotch Teacher's name here was Craven. This is another neat thing about this film, as it has a bunch of nods to horror directors with the other last names in it being Carpenter, Romero, and Browning. Something else that kind of reminds me of Silent Hill. I watched you in science class today. You did something to Craven, didn't you? Well, her friend came to the conclusion she had powers pretty quick, so this is going to require immediate making out in the shower, which is cool with her, I guess, until she hits the limit. What are you doing, Vicky? And unfortunately for her, this is one of those caged locker rooms where they lock your ass in if you take too long kissing in the shower. So time for the backup plan, stirring herself away until she wants herself for tomorrow. Wop bobble bop a wop bam yeah, crash bang boom bam cool aid wipes out thirst for you oh shit yeah. crash a bang a boomer with a big bright smile and a fun taste <gasps> that was amazing but you better drink that up right now or else she's gonna spoil wait how'd she get out Help! I'm a ghost and I can't get out! Nah. I'm also naked! Okay. It's not in Northern, don't you know how to use this thing? Oh, you turn it into a fag trick? What's wrong with you? Don't you wanna fuck me? Don't you want to have a point to what you're doing? The 
everything about Mary Lou now just seems aimless. Why is she sort of living Vicky's life? To do prom again? You think she'd want to keep her boyfriend for that? At least at first so she can betray him later. She even lets Bill know she's around. Just to say hi, I guess. Revenge? No! See you later. Alligator. No! Thank you for that. I pranked you by taking your son! Scanner House! So since she can't make out with her squished friend anymore, it's making out with daddy time! And shockingly, her mom's not quite up for that. You're not leaving this house. Spear! She is broken in half! What are you talking about, Dad? You know something about this, don't you? Please, now you just... No, you gotta stop controlling my life! I gotta find her. All right, then. You just be careful. <laughs> I really wish he had left it at that. Though, clonking Ultra Wiener over the head is an okay second. And now it's time for Michael Ironside to put on the serious business knitted sweater. <laughs> It's just that open suitcases scare the shit out of me. Scanner house! Stupid bastard! I loved you! This is a <laughs> really beautiful moment, isn't it? Michael Ironside in a knitted sweater crying over Priest Buddy. Never forget. Nah, forget it. Nah, screw it. Doing it again. Fuck, he changed out of serious business sweater? Hi, Mary Lou speaking. Sorry, I can't come to the phone right now, but I'm busy at the prom. Places to go, people to kill. So Mary Lou is stuck in a time warp, but she knew how to record an answering machine message. Also, she felt that was important to do before leaving. Well, I suppose that is in keeping with her character. You have a drinking problem. I drink. I get drunk. So what's the problem? <laughs> Oh, Goldilocks, you are the best of the worst. Now I will be prom queen. Unfortunately for Ironside, blinking light bow tie here gets a BJ to switch who won prom queen. But of course, he didn't realize a ghost with the most petty of reasons for haunting the high school was here. <laughs> And hey, does this make Mary Lou the very first internet ghost? Actually, I'm pretty sure it's just a LAN ghost. All you need is electrical tape to take care of those ones. And the winner is... Diet Pepsi! No! Diet Coke! So, yeah, this is really why Mary Lou is here, to win prom queen. I so would never have voted for her. Hey, Kelly, how'd you blow it? Oh, boy. Don't worry, Kelly, you may not have gotten to be prom queen, but you'll get to be Sailor Moon. Don't touch the queen. Uh, you have a drinking problem. I drink. I get drunk. So what's the problem? I spent sixty-four dollars on my hair today. If you mess it up, I'll kill you. This'll take care of you.
What? Ha ha! Stink bomb proof dress! Alright, plan B. Hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> Gonna go! <laughs> go fucking out of here! Well, maybe she'll get help and Vicky'll still be alright. <laughs> So Mary Lou can just pop out of Vicky now? What? And did this just become Carrie again? Damn it, I wish that would stop happening. Really starting to piss me off. The crown is mine, bitch. So when a zombie ghost is after you, where else would you run to but the prop room in the basement? There is at least a nice trick during this part, though, with Mary Lou standing in silhouette and then popping up really close to scare the bozo. she have to rip out of her chest again to switch back or that's just a one-time deal and the soul case reappears it was gone don't look directly into the trap <laughs> <laughs> I looked at the trap, right? The confusion never stops at this point as Billingside shows up with the crown, kisses her, which causes the evil dead to fly through and then blows up her grave? Oh, now I get it. Little girl, all the world will be yours tonight, my queen of... Yup, so now none of it ever happened. No, of course, that was just actually a confusing what if? I suppose? But that's okay, because now it's time for the movie's ultimate point of confusion. Vicky is inside the suitcase wearing the same clothes from the chalkboard scene and still wet. Guess chalkboard water is the wettest of all waters. And naturally, after everyone seeing another woman rip out of her chest, the police have absolutely no questions for Vicky. None for Bill either, who everyone's seen blow a hole through her. Glad we now know how the 1957 fire investigation went. Then Ironside finally gets to be prom queen as Mary Lou possesses him. She didn't have to switch out at the briefcase this time. Oh, and she even magicked up the license plate. Real fucking cute. Again, she'd want revenge on the one she's now possessing, but who cares about that? Just gotta wait another year to be prom queen. The film doesn't seem to know if Vicky is possessed or if they just switched places, which is very confusing. After going to the prop room, her attitude gradually changes and she knows certain things and people. Billy. If she hadn't have been in the suitcase but was possessed at this point, then it makes sense that she stopped at the grave because it'd be a bit like Mary Lou seeing her own grave before she really knew what was going on. But the other major point that works against the possession angle besides Vicky being in the suitcase at the end is Mary Lou's disembodied spirit throwing hairdo out the window. If Vicky was getting possessed, it would have been already happening at this point. And of course, there's no way for the possession angle to work when Mary Lou ripped out of her chest. 
it's kind of disappointing because it could have been a lot better if it was definitely a possession and we seen the world getting further and further distorted as Mary Lou took over. I also feel the overall film would have been a lot stronger if it continued the struggle between being Mary Lou or Vicky after the chalkboard scene. Instead, Vicky is just non-existent till the end and we get a very confusing popping out of the chest. The switch out and pop out also make it particularly strange that Mary Lou even bothered pretending to be Vicky. The last act makes Mary Lou almost able to do anything and you'd think, as stupid as it is, if it's all about being prom queen then it's an ego thing and Mary Lou would show up as herself to win it. If it's a straight up possession like it should have been, you remove that possibility and if her mind's somewhere stuck between being Mary Lou and Vicky, it still makes sense to have her living Vicky's life and out for revenge. According to interviews with writer Ron Oliver and producer Peter Simpson, somewhere between half to one third of this film was reshot after its initial completion. This was because they were unhappy with the tone of the film set by the original director, Bruce Pittman, feeling it to be not very scary. So Peter Simpson got the reshots done with Ron Oliver directing those scenes. This would definitely explain why at times the film feels at odds with itself, as some parts of it feel pretty genuinely creepy, like the Silent Hill otherworldish spots and where Vicky seems like she's losing her mind. But once Mary Lou has taken over, it's mostly pretty silly. A wop bobaloo bop, a wop bam. <laughs> I don't really know if Bruce Pittman changed parts of the script with what he directed, but the reshots should have tried to fix that since the importance of the soul suitcase is never explained. And this leaves a big question mark about if Mary Lou was attached to it or the crown, and of course that also leads to the confusion over Vicky's possession or switch out. Parts of the movie don't make sense if she wasn't possessed, and parts of the movie don't make sense if they just switched places. Prom Night 2, well, definitely shouldn't be called that, but it's still got some decent elements to it and some genuinely creepy scenes, and the cheesy parts are still pretty fun. It is a shame it wasn't released with a consistent tone, but it's still entertaining regardless. Now hit the music! <laughs> No! Hit the right music! a grave in my living room. Oh. <gasps> and then, she screamed and she fainted right in the middle of the gym. Another prom queen hopeful bites the big one.